Hey guys, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm going to work through some uh, some practice problems um, for confidence intervals. It doesn't say confidence intervals here, but it does at the top. Um, yeah, I'm going to do two examples. Uh, one of which we're going to use uh, a sigma known case, and one of which we're going to use a sigma unknown case. So, get my pen up and run in here, and I'll read the question while I do that. In an effort to estimate the mean amount spent for a customer for dinner at a major Atlanta restaurant, data were collected for a sample of 49 customers. Assume a population standard deviation of $5. And that right there tells us which one it is. Those are words that should pop out of you. Population standard deviation, that also known as sigma x. If we, they give us that. They tell us that we're going to assume it's $5. What that means is that we're in a world where sigma x is known. That's important. Hmm. The other stuff we learned is that we have a sample of 49 customers. So n equals 49. And the first part is that they want to know that at the 95% confidence level, what is the margin of error? Now, if you remember, margin of error essentially says, okay, well, let's say that we drew a certain X bar. They're not telling us what it is yet. Right? They're just telling us what value. The margin of error is, uh, confidence interval is the, the two means that locate these curves, right? There's one curve where our X bar is weirdly high, Right, and that is centered at mu one. And there's one curve where x bar is weirdly low, uh, and that's centered at mu two. They should be the same shape, and these should be the same distance. I didn't draw it exactly right, but this distance here is a margin of error. In order to find that, we don't actually need um, to know x bar because we, all we need to know is um, what this distance is on this curve, the distance from here to here, where this area is alpha over two. So we have a mean, we, we don't know what it is. Um, we have a sample mean, we don't know what that is, but we can tell what the distance is because the only thing that mod modifies that is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Okay, so that's the intuition to this, is, is just that we have a, a, sh a curve with a particular shape, which is given by the sigma x bar, um, and we want to know what the distance is here. Okay, now how we find that, well, the formula is pretty straightforward. The margin of error is going to be equal to uh, z sub alpha over 2 times sigma x bar, which is equal to z sub alpha over 2 times sigma x over the square root of n. So we can figure that out pretty straightforwardly um, with the information that we have. And essentially what this is, what we're doing, is we are just relating the curve uh, to z, to the z curve, 0, sigma equals 1. Um, but in order to figure this part, the margin of error part out, we don't actually need to know what x bar and sigma 1 are. We just need to know that x bar is a certain distance from that. Um, and that distance is z alpha over 2. Or this area right here is alpha over 2. Okay. And then we can, yeah. In any case, that's how we do it. We work through the intuition and the notes. I refer you back to the notes. Think about it. See if it makes sense to you why we don't need margin of error. You can play around with the score function, um, and you can learn a lot just by playing with that. So let's do this. Uh, alpha is equal to 0 0.95. So alpha over 2 is equal to 0 0.475. I'm going to pull up my uh, <coughs> pull up Adobe Acrobat and get our I'll get my Z table up. Um, what we want to know is the Z value for which the distance between 0 and z is 0 0.475. Um, the reason for that is that that will give us the mu, you know, the distance away from x bar, x bar we are. So here we go. You guys can see this. Um, we're looking in the body of the table for 0.475 for alpha over 2. Oops. Uh, let me scroll down so you can see it. OK, it should be right here. You can see we have it exactly going to be 1.96, right? So you get the 1.9 over here, 0 0.06 over here. So 1.96 is our value of z. Um, so what we have now is z alpha over over 2 equals 1.96. Uh, and then we already have the rest of this stuff, right? So we can calculate our margin of error. It's going to be 1.96 times the, the population standard deviation, which is 5, divided by the square root of n times 
5 divided by the square root of 49 is our n, which is equal to 1.96 times 5 sevenths. Um, and I'm going to pop up Excel. Uh, so we can do this equals 1.96 times 5 divided by 7, give me 1.4. So our margin of error here is 1.4. And that's part A. Now part B wants to know if the sample mean is 24.8, what is the 95% confidence interval? Well, that's pretty straightforward. We just add and subtract the margin of error. So the X bar is 24.8. That means our confidence interval is going to be mu1 comma mu2 equals X bar plus or minus uh, Z alpha over 2 sigma x over the square root of n, or this part right here is our margin of error, which means it's going to be 24.8 plus and minus 1.4, um, and I can plug this in if you want just to show you <coughs> ways to make it happen, plus 1.4 equals 24.8 minus 1.4, 26.2 and 23.4 are our answers, equals 23.4 comma 26.2. That's the answer to that question. That's saying that uh, if we want to know what the mean amount spent per customer is in the population, it's going to be, with 95% confidence, it's going to be somewhere between 23.4 and 26.2. That's how you solve these. Pretty straightforward. Um, and that's, we found that this distance here to be 1.4. And then we use that to get our mu1 and our mu2. That's what we were doing. Okay, let's do the next one. 8.16, the mean number of hours of flying time for pilots at Continental Airlines is 49 hours per month, according to the Wall Street Journal. Assume that this mean was based on actual flying times for a sample of 100 Continental pilots and that the sam sample standard deviation was 8.5 hours. Okay, so before we were working with the population standard deviation, now we have the sample standard deviation. Sample standard deviation is also known as S. Um, and if we don't know the population standard deviation, then we can't be certain about the shape of the sampling distribution. The truth is that we're off, right? Um, so that means that we're going to use we're going to use a t distribution. Right? So we still have a sampling distribution that looks either you know where you our two extremes are going to have for our confidence interval. One's going to be if our uh, x bar was really high, in which case it's over here. And one's going to be over here our x bar is really low and we still do have sigma x bar equals sigma x over the square root of n we just don't know it so we're going to approximate it with s over the square root of n and that means we have to use the t distribution because we're going to account for the fact that we're we're going to be off there <coughs> okay what this means in terms of our formula is that instead of using the formula we used before this is going to be our new formula now we have uh, our confidence interval mu1 mu2 equal to uh, x bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n. Um, and then this right here is our margin of error. Okay, <coughs> that says MOE. Um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so to find the margin of error, uh, we need to find t alpha over 2. We have s and we have n. So t alpha over 2 equals s equals n equals. s is 8.5. That's from the question. n is uh, 100. And then t alpha over 2, well, that's a little tricky. First, let's make let's figure out which curve we're looking at. The degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 1, if you remember from our notes, because we have to estimate two things, so we lose a degree of freedom. So we're down to 99 degrees of freedom. And we want to find, and alpha is 95, right? They're using the 95% confidence interval. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to find the t distribution, which is centered at 0. It's got 99 degrees of freedom. And we want to find the value of t on this curve such that this area here, between 0 and t, is alpha over 2. Okay, so what's alpha over 2? Well, it's going to be 0. 475. 0.475, which means that the area in the upper tail here, this is 0 0.025. And so that's how we're going to find this on a, on a t-table. Let me open up my t-table for you so you can see it. 
got a Z table open right now. Uh, hold on, let's see my, there we go. Okay, so this is my this is the T table that I use. What we're looking for is the one with 99 degrees of freedom, because that's the curve we're looking at. Remember, this shows lots of different curves. The one we care about is this one right here, and we want the column that has 0 0.025 in the upper tail. You can look over here and see that's the area of probability that it tells us. So 0 0.025 is the area in the upper tail, and the curve we're looking at is 99. So 1.984 is the T value, T alpha over two. That's the T that has that much in the upper tail. 1.984, let me get back to my board. Oh, there it is. So, <coughs> this right here, uh, where's my pen, there we go. This is 1.984, easy enough. Okay, now we can calculate our margin of error. Uh, it's right here, right? So we're gonna take this and put 1.984 times 8.5, which comes from here, over the square root of 100. Uh, it's a nice square number again. So this gives us 1.984 times 8.5 divided by 10, which is 0 0.85. I did that math in my head. Um, but I can use the formulas in here as well. It's 1.985 times 8.5 divided by square root of 100. 1.68725. Six, eight, seven, two, five. That's the margin of error. I can show you how to find that in Excel, as by the way. <coughs> so you can also do equals t dist. Uh, is that right? No, t inv. We want to find the value of t. So t inv, um, and we have 0 0.9 or 0 0.025 in the tail, and 99 degrees of freedom. Mm. Ah, that's 0 0.05 must be the, in the combined tails. Let's see. Look at the help for that. Uh, yeah, the probability is associated with the two-tailed student's distribu t distribution. So because it's a 95% confidence interval, we have 5% in both tails combined. Um, and this t in will kick out our, our, uh, our t alpha over 2 that we want. <coughs> okay, so... That's one way to get it. We can practice with that and play around with these, but 1.984 is what we get there. Uh, Excel can do that for you. Okay, in any case, this is how we find our margin of error. We find our T alpha over two. It's much easier when you know what the what you're trying to do, right? When you have the intuition down, you can work your way through it. Um, and this is our margin of error, 1.68725. So that's part A. Part B is asking us for the 95% confidence interval. Well, we have X bar. I didn't write it down yet. It's 49 hours per month. That's X bar. So in order to find the confidence interval, all we have to do is plug in 49 in this formula here. Sorry. We have mu1 comma mu2 equals 49 plus or minus, and then just our margin of error, 1.68725. Um, so... 49, so it's going to be this equals this plus this, and equals this minus this. So we have 49 plus 1.68725, and 49 minus 1.68725, we get 47.3 and 50.7. Um, and that's that's what we get. 47.3, 50.7. Put these in parentheses if you want to show that it's an interval. Um, but those are the answers to the question. Uh, yeah, so that's just playing around a little bit with some practice problems. Um, I'm going to do move on to hypothesis testing probably, but if you have any questions on any specific problems, let me know. Uh, it's relatively easy to record one of these for those. So. Thanks, and I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Bye.